Hi everyone, I'm Ryan at Marine Parts Source. In this video, we're gonna be talking about one of the areas where we see our customers have the greatest struggles in trying to identify the correct components for their boat. And that's with steering cables. We see it all too often where people don't order the correct type of cable, and even more frequently, they don't measure the length correctly. So it's one of the most returned items that we have. And so we're gonna go through all the details in this video to make sure that you have all the information you need to order the cable correctly for your boat. Let's get started. So the first step in making sure that you get the correct cable for your boat is to understand what type of steering system you have. Now we're talking specifically about mechanical steering, the type that has a push-pull cable, not hydraulic steering. There's really two main types of mechanical steering systems. There's a rotary steering system, and there's a rack and pinion steering system. Now, if you have a jet boat, the steering for that is a little bit different. We'll cover that in a minute. But let's look at those two main types of steering and uh, see the differences between them. So when we're comparing the rotary system versus a rack and pinion system, what you'll notice is that they're both the same on the engine end of the cable. Uh, this is the engine end here. There's an eyelet on the end of it. It slides through the transom clamp over here, and then this uh, tie bar comes down and connects to the eyelet to hold it in place. That's the same on both a rotary cable or a rack and pinion. Where the differences come into play is what's going on beneath the console. So let's take a look at that next. So when you're looking under the console of your boat, you're gonna find the steering helm and that's where the cable connects to your steering wheel. Um, and that's where you're gonna see the real differences between a rotary steering system or a rack and pinion steering system. Here's a rotary steering cable, the console or the helm end of the cable. You can see that it's just like a spiraled sort of gear end for the cable. And this is a rotary steering helm. So the cable is gonna thread into the helm here and basically there are gears inside of this helm that the cable is gonna engage with so that when you turn your wheel, which is gonna be mounted on the top of this spindle, it's gonna engage with the cable and push or pull it to move the engine back here at the stern of the boat. Now on the rack and pinion steering system, here is the helm end of a rack and pinion cable. And you see it's this big long rectangular bar. There's a cut out here in the middle uh, where there's sort of some threaded a groove a piece of metal that's going to engage with the gear in a rack and pinion helm, okay? And so that's going to fit onto the cable just like this. And once again, when you turn the wheel, it's going to move this spindle, engage the cable, and push or pull it to move the engine. So that's how the rack and pinion system works. And really the differences between the two really come down to how much space you have beneath the console. Uh, a lot of people don't have space for this big, long rack and pinion type of bar, so they may opt for a rotary steering system. It just depends. Um, and of course, whatever the boat builder put in is probably what you're gonna go back with uh, when, instead of overhauling it to a different type of system. So as I mentioned before, if you're working on the steering for a jet boat, then the cable is going to look a little bit different than either a rack and pinion or a rotary steering system. This is a cable for a jet boat steering system. And what you're going to notice is that both of the engine and the helm ends of the cable have a threaded end to them. Um, this is the engine end here that has this large nut right here. And that's going to connect back to the bulkhead and move the jet back and forth to just steer the boat. This is your helm end of the cable. And here is a jet boat helm. There's some additional hardware that connects here to the helm. And then this threaded end is gonna to connect to that hardware. Once again, when you're turning the steering wheel, that's what's gonna engage the cable to push or pull it back and forth and move the jet at the back of the boat. Another factor you're gonna to wanna to consider when you're picking out the correct steering cable for your boat is making sure that you get the right series of cable. There are a lot of different options for steering cables when it comes to things like whether or not you want no feedback or whether you have power steering on your boat or not. And that's all gonna be determined with the series of the cable is whether or not it will work for your particular application. The easiest way to identify the series of the cable that you currently have on your boat is by finding the part number that's stamped on the cable jacket. And that's gonna tell you a lot about what type of cable that is. And you can either go back with the same type of cable 
or if you're looking to upgrade, you can browse the different options that are out there. As long as it's gonna match the steering system that you have and the uh, length that you need, uh, you should be in good shape. So while we're looking at the number on the cable jacket, this is a good time to start to talk about how to identify the correct length of cable for your boat because the cable number actually contains the length in the number itself. Uh, the last two digits, in most cases, on most cables, uh, is gonna be the length of the cable in feet. This goes for whether you have a Teleflex cable or Seastar Solutions, Dometic, and even Uflex. They all basically do the same thing, where they list the cable series, and then those last two digits are that cable length in feet. Now, some of you might have an older Morse style cable. These cables had a red jacket. They haven't been made in many, many years, but there's still a few out there in the field. If you happen to be replacing a Morse cable, you'll want to note that the number on the jacket is actually uh, the length in inches. So make sure that you know about that difference if you have a Morse red jacket cable. A lot of times people have trouble identifying the length of the cable using that number that's on the cable jacket because that number's just not there. Over time, it's worn off, especially if the cable is older, it could have rubbed off at some point and uh, you can't identify any sort of markings on the cable so that you know what it is. If that's the case, you're gonna have to measure it yourself. And this is where people really start to get tripped up because what they do is they measure the cable from end to end. And when you're measuring a rotary cable or a rack and pinion cable, that's just not correct. If you try to measure from metal end to metal end, you're gonna get an incorrect length. You don't wanna include any of the metal when you're measuring the cable. For both a rotary cable and a rack and pinion cable, you only wanna measure the length of the plastic jacket. And then there's a formula that you're gonna to use to calculate the correct length of cable. That formula differs whether you're talking about a rotary cable or a rack and pinion cable. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, let's go ahead and measure this cable. So what's important as you're measuring this cable jacket is just to get the cable laid out as straight as possible. And then, like I said, you're gonna be measuring the plastic jacket only. So this cable came out to be 157 inches for the just the jacket length. And it's a rotary cable, so if we're calculating the length of a rotary cable, we take that jacket length, we add another 18 inches, and then round up to the next foot. In this case, 157 inches plus the additional 18 puts it at 175 inches. We round up to the next foot, that's 180 inches or a 15 foot cable. That's for the rotary style. If this was a rack and pinion cable, we'd actually measure that jacket length, add another 30 inches, and then round up to the next foot. In that case, 157 plus 30, now we're at 187 inches. We'd round up to the next foot, which would put it at 192 inches or a 16 foot cable. I think one of the reasons why many people get tripped up with measuring steering cables is that it is a different method than when you're measuring the control cables on your boat. Those are the cables that connect to your shift and throttle. Those cables actually are measured from tip to tip, whereas we mentioned before, Steering cables are not. They're usually measured just using the cable jacket, and then you apply the formulas that we provided in order to calculate the correct cable length. The one exception to that rule are jet boat steering cables. If you're measuring a jet boat steering cable, you actually do measure it from tip to tip, and then you're gonna round up to the next foot if it falls in between two different feet markers. So uh, in the case before, like if we had measured this and it was 157 inches, you actually have to round up to the next foot, which would be 168 inches total or a 14 foot cable. Now, sometimes the problem can be a bit bigger to identify what length of cable that you need because not only do you not have a cable number to identify the cable, you don't have a cable at all. It happens, maybe you've bought a project boat, somebody's pulled the steering system out, you don't have anything to measure or to figure out what cable length you need. The only solution in that case is you're gonna have to measure the path that the cable would be taking from the panel back to the engine. So that's gonna vary depending on what type of boat you have. So you're gonna have to take some time to get on the boat and figure out what's the best path for the cable to take. On this center console, it's really nice. The boat builder has put a tube in that runs from right underneath this console 
back diagonally to the corner of the boat and then over to the engine. So that's an easy path to measure. And on pontoon boats, it can be pretty simple as well. Most of the time, steering cables will just run directly underneath the boat. So you'd run down from the console to the stern of the boat and then over to the engine. Most traditional boats, they'll have a console right here on the side. And what you're gonna do is just measure straight from that steering wheel over to the gunnel, and then from the gunnel back to the corner of the boat, and then over to the engine. Once you have all the dimensions of the cable run measured, simply add them all together for a total. In our case, we come up with 183 inches. If your cable mounts to a tilt tube, which is what most outboards have and what we have here, you just add another six inches and then round up to the next foot. That brings our measurement to 192 inches or a 16 foot cable. If your cable does not mount to a tilt tube, then the formula is going to be a little bit different. So this is more frequent on boats with stern drives and inboard engines. If the cable is mounting to the transom or a splash well or a stringer, then instead of adding six inches to your total, you're actually going to subtract six inches. So in our case, we have 183 inches. And if we had a transom mounted cable, we would subtract six inches from that to get to 177 and then round up to the next foot, which would bring us to 180 inches or a 15 foot cable. That about covers everything that you're gonna to need to know in order to correctly identify a steering cable for your boat. But if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at the number on the screen. Our ABYC certified experts have a lot of experience in helping people identify all the correct equipment for their boat. You can always find us online at marinepartsource.com and we'd love it if you'd like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.